I'm Rob Hoyles and I'm here at Ascari Race Resort in Malaga for Visor Down uh, on the test of the new Honda CB1000R. Now this is a bike that's been about 10 years in the making. Uh, the previous model was well loved and well received but it's had a massive update over the last 10 years culminating in this, the new 2018 CB1000R. Honda made it fairly clear that styling was its number one priority and while just a quick glance at the end result of several years of collaboration between Italian stylists and, and Japanese engineers backs that up, the improvements are far more than skin deep. The bike looks very short but the wheelbase is actually a little longer than the outgoing model due to the decision to fit a fatter 190 section rear tyre. The illusion of shrinkage comes from moving the ignition barrel in front of the fuel tank from its usual home in the top yoke that in turn meant Honda was able to position the compact headlight far closer to the rider. Similarly, moving the number plate to an ugly lump of plastic that bolts to the otherwise gorgeous single-sided swinging arm means the rear end needs to be no longer than the pillion seat. But it's the attention to the small details that makes this revamp all the more impressive. Those brushed aluminium accents on the front mudguard, instrument, radiator and injection shroud are just that. They're aluminium, they're not faux lookalike plastic. The CB1000R logos aren't decals, they're etched into the metal. Then there's the detailing on the clutch cover and cylinder head, along with some very neat machining on the footrest hangers. These all sound like very small details, but they really pop out when you see the bike in the metal. And the lack of plastic helped the bike to feel as though it's been machined out of one solid lump of steel. And yet it's 12 kilograms lighter than the old model. Much of that weight has been lost in the four into two exhaust system, which saves four and a half kilograms, while the clever design of the mono backbone steel frame saves a further two and a half kilograms. It also adds neat touches such as pillion grab handles that are machined into the subframe itself, which saves a few more precious grams. It also allows the seat to be slimmer, and while we'd like to see the option of a softer seat pad, this slimline waist means shorter riders shouldn't struggle so much with its 830mm height. The same 2006 Fireblade engine remains for 2018, but it's a very different animal. As well as being treated to a slipper clutch, power is up by 20 brake horsepower thanks to forged rather than cast pistons, and the valve lift has also been increased. And a new airbox not only rams more air down those bigger throats, but it's also been engineered to sound better, and it really has a lovely throaty growl now. Controlling all of this is Honda's somewhat controversial throttle by wire system, TBW. This was heavily criticised on the 2017 Fireblade, but it seems Honda has really nailed it this time, and I'm happy to report that the Honda's aim of giving the bike more character goes way further than a growling airbox, and much of it is thanks to the throttle by wire. Project leader Soya Ushida gravely told us that the engine must have character, very important, and Honda has done exactly that. Engineering a rush of power and a huge surge of torque to chime in between 6 and 8,000 RPM doesn't come without its problems though, and the TBW allows a fat dollop of grunt in the mid-range without making the bottom end feel like a light switch. It's clever stuff and the throttle take-up is never anything but smooth, regardless of where you are in the rev range, building all the way up to the 11,500 RPM red line. It's linear where you want it before exploding on corner exit. It's a neat trick when you can make a bike that we dare you to thrash it yet not complain when all you want to do is short shift and cruise. From 2000 RPM in pretty much any gear this bike will pull cleanly and without making you feel like a novice. The electronics can be tweaked by the rider too. There are four modes, sport, standard, rain and user, which can all be accessed at the prod of the left thumb. These all use more or less of each variable, power P, torque control T, which is essentially torque uh, traction control, and engine braking, which is EB. User mode allows each element to be adjusted to suit with the option to fully disable the TC if, for example, you enjoy power slides and wheelies. The LCD instrument panel is easy to read too, the gear indicator is huge, and fiddlers will love the various settings for shift lights, etc. Best of all, it's easy to operate without the help of a millennial or a YouTube tutorial. The CB1000R is fairly firmly sprung, which helps the bike to hold and recover its geometry quickly through fast direction changes and into and out of slower corners. The shock is fairly basic, but feels plush and progressive, so that's all good. The fully adjustable Showa big piston forks have a similar progression and handle bumpy roads, but without diving too much at the slightest stroke of the brake lever. The steering is super fast, but stability doesn't seem to be an issue, and I could only upset the bike by being overly aggressive with it, and even then was only reprimanded with a disapproving wag of the bike's head. The brakes are powerful with good modulation. I didn't notice the ABS unless I deliberately grabbed a handful of brakes, so if you can't tell it's there, then it's working perfectly. It really is an easy bike to ride, however you want to ride it, but if there are two things I change, then they're both black and round. The OE Bridgestone S21 tyres let this bike down. On the cold Andalusian roads on our way to the Ascari Race Resort, while I didn't have any real moments, neither did I have the confidence to push in the corners or carry a great deal of lean angle. Even on the track, I didn't really feel as though I was, they, were, they were telling me much. If grip isn't the issue, then feel certainly is, and my first modification would be to trade the S21s in for something softer and stickier to exploit the bike's true potential. Honda has moved the CB1000R on a huge leap. 
in a naked market that's often hard to define, there'll be plenty of debate as to which bikes are its direct rivals. Some would say that it's 20 brake horsepower down on the BMW S1000R and 15 down on the Yamaha MT10. Others could argue it's streets ahead of its retro modern counterparts such as the BMW R9T. But whatever your reasons for being interested in this bike, tyres aside, I'm struggling to think why you'd be disappointed. It looks amazing, it's fast, it handles, it's packed with useful technology and it's comfortable. But above all else, at long last, the CB1000R finally has what it needs to be more than just an also-ran. Finally, it's got a soul.